If you've got a test coming up in photosynthesis, then you definitely want to watch this video. Following the success of how much you guys all said you found it helpful last video when I went through how to revise with biological molecules as if I was actually going to sit a test, I'm going to do the same thing again today, but for photosynthesis. So get your notes, get your resources ready, revise with me, and I'll show you how you can get an A star preparing for an end of unit test for photosynthesis. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that one of my favorite active recall techniques is flashcards. And for photosynthesis, the key thing is going to be not so much definitions, but for each of the stages of photosynthesis, putting on the back the key points or the products, but splitting it into small chunks so that you know what you do remember versus you don't and keep testing yourself. So here's some ideas that I had for flashcards. One of the key things with photosynthesis is knowing the processes involved and being able to say what the useful products are. So that's the sort of thing that I'd put on flashcards. So I've started with photolysis or photolysis, and the reason I've underlined them in different colors is to emphasize the photo and lysis to help you remember that the photo is light, lysis is splitting. And that's what I've got as the little definition that you can see on that card, as well as the equation. I'm then gonna go through what the role of photoionization is, giving the definition, and the same thing for the other processes in the light-dependent reactions. Then I've got the products, and that is one of the key questions that you could get as knowledge or as application. So just being able to quickly recall that the products are ATP and reduced NADP is a great thing to test on a flashcard. Also, you need to know the location. So I've got those on my flashcards as well. Another really good way to actively test your knowledge and improve your long-term memory, which is key for getting those top marks in your A-level exam questions, is Active Recall Try My Active Recall Workbook. So here are the pages from the photosynthesis section, and you can see in this that it tests a range of knowledge on this topic, but in different types of ways. So here I am having a go at answering those questions in my Active Recall workbook. And if you have got your copy, then definitely do this electronically or print it out. And if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description so you can get your hands on a copy of this really effective Active Recall workbook to help you to get those top grades. So here is my Active Recall workbook for topic five specifically looking at the photosynthesis section. The best way to use my Active Recall workbook is to either do a test from memory by completely doing all of this without looking at your notes, or you can have your notes there, my A-level notes to rely on if you need to look back, if you aren't sure on the exact level of detail. But the beauty of it being an electronic product is you can download, print, answer it electronically like I am here as many times as you want. So test yourself multiple times with a booklet, maybe at first with your notes, and then move on to doing it without your notes. This is actually one of my favourite activities that I do in school, and I do it for respiration and for photosynthesis. But concept maps are a really good way of linking together all of your knowledge so you can see connections. And for photosynthesis, you can make an epic concept map. So I've made one here in this video. I'll admit it's a little bit messy and you can probably see from mine why you could maybe change the proportion so it fits a bit better. But the idea is fit all of the light dependent and the light independent reactions on one diagram of a chloroplast so you can see where everything happens. So here is me making this concept map.
once I've then tested my knowledge repeatedly to check I do understand the content, I can remember all the key points, then it is time to go on to exam questions. So you can get a whole range of free exam questions on my website and I sort them in by application, so skill-based, or you can have them by topic. So if you find the topic five booklet, there are loads of really challenging fade synthesis questions in there. And I'm gonna to skip to that. You can see me having a go at some of those questions. So that's the range of activities I would do, but you need to know how to fit that into a schedule. Now in my last video, I showed you this as a two week plan because I assume that like with my school, most people get two weeks notice before an end of topic test. I put this on TikTok and the response was wild. So many of you commented and also most of you said you get one week max. Some of you only get a couple of days. So for this one, I'm actually gonna show you how you could prepare if you only have one week's notice. So here is my one week revision plan. Ideally, you want to be aiming for 60 to 90 minutes per day, especially days five, six, seven, you really wanna be doing at least 90 minutes at that point. And what I'd suggest is for day one, you should be using your A-level notes or my A-level notes and the YouTube videos that I've got to create the flashcards, knowing what the key points are and knowing what are the essential pieces of information you need to know for this topic. Day two, use those flashcards to test your knowledge and how familiar you are with the mark schemes. And you can also use my active recall workbook that I showed you earlier on in this video. The next one, day three, test yourself with the flashcards again and more active recall. Day four, you want to be creating a concept map. And that is the epic concept map that I showed you in this video, but maybe give yourself a bit more space for where you're drawing all of the stages of chemiosmosis. Day five, flashcards and exam questions. So don't start exam questions too soon. You need to make sure you fully understand, remember, and are confident with the information before jumping into exam questions. And then day six, you want to be doing more exam questions, but as you start to complete more and more, look for common questions and the marking points that they insist on and create flashcards for those common questions and common marking points. Day seven, you want to maximize your time on exam questions at this stage. Answering the questions, checking through the mark scheme, looking for common questions and looking for common marks as well. So let me know, how much notice do you actually get for an end of topic test typically? Tell me in the comments, because I'd love to know what is the average that everyone gets. So I hope you enjoyed revising photosynthesis with me and it's given you some ideas of how best to test your knowledge, improve those exam techniques for this topic. Now, what I'd recommend you go and do right now is watch my topic five summary video. I summarize all of topic five, but if you're just doing a photosynthesis test, you only need to watch a section which is photosynthesis. But what's really good Good is you've got all of the content you need to know about photosynthesis in that one video at exactly the level of detail you need to know. So it's a great start point to help with making the flashcards, concept maps, and a quick review. That's it for today. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed, then click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos.